every prediction I've made here I've done with so little certainty. It's just so tight in so many different areas. I can't make a 100% convinced decision on who's who's going down, who's finishing the playoffs and who's going up. It's ridiculously hard to call at this stage, isn't yeah. it? And Hello and welcome to the Second Tier Preview Show brought to you by SBK. I'm Ryan Dilks and it's the Derbyshire to my Rome. It's just in Peach. Good day to you, Ryan. I tell you what, Justin, no country does post-holiday come-downs better than the UK. It really hits home <laughs> that your holiday is over when you're stuck in traffic on the M25 in the early hours of the morning and it's pissing it down. But hey, good to be back, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I would say that maybe, potentially. Listeners might also say that. You know, it's been a nice week with you, with you gone from the country, but you are right, the UK is a dump. Italy is so much better. Is that what you were saying, basically? I think that's what you were getting at. I think that's what I was getting at. I don't think the whole country was rejoicing that I was out of the country. Um, oh. It's not like the whole country was aware of this. And I don't think the whole th- the whole the whole population is much better off without me there. But look, I've had my international break. I'm now fully refreshed for the business end of the season, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Peachy boy, welcome to the number one championship podcast, the second tier. Thank you for joining us wherever you are. Well, look, it's time for us to make some predictions, Justin. That's what the title of the episode says, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Because, ladies and gentlemen, what we're doing today is making our predictions for who's winning the league, who's going up automatically, who's finishing in sixth place, who's going down, and who's finishing as top goal scorer. It's an international break, so we're going to put our necks on the line for just the sheer enjoyment of the listener, Justin. Um, And we'll probably come back to bite us on the arse, but you know what? That's what we're here to do. We're here to make some bloody predictions, aren't we? Um, And look, it's a long time since we had a title race, promotion race, playoff race and relegation battle all to be decided still at this stage <laughs> and all still so hard to call, right? Yeah, it's, it is difficult. It is difficult. There are so many teams in for so many things at the moment. You've got almost the bottom six outside of Rotherham at the bottom of the table fighting relegation who could get easily pulled back into the And the rest. And yeah, and the rest, the bottom six are maybe not doing those teams that are they're above them a, a bit of a service. And you got the playoffs. It's the uh, I mean, West Brom might have tied up fifth, but again, that's not out of the question that they could lose a few games. And and um, the likes of Coventry, Preston, um, other, other teams. Before I forget them, uh, yeah, get pulled <laughs> into it. And then the automatics and, and title. Um, I mean, a title race is, is is making me salivate just thinking about it. Because again, when was the last time we had a a full-on title race. We might not have a title race. Leeds could run away with it. Leicester could run away with it. But to be at this stage in this season and uh, for everything, everything to be on the line, woohoo, baby, yeah. that is amazing. Yeah, it made me woohoo as well. I mean, the last time I can recall anything like this was the 1920 season when the top two was still up for grabs, as was the playoffs and relegation battle. However, Leeds have pretty much wrapped up the title by this point. So Mm -hmm. it really is the first time in a while where we've had a situation like this, where pretty much everything is still up for grabs and it's so exciting. And look, every prediction I've made here, I've done with so little certainty because it's just so tight in so many different areas that you can't really make any confident calls at this stage. Can you? No, no, I'm, I'm that Larry David meme. Where he's going, eh, 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 he just he's just conflicted, and it's the same with everything. I I, I can't I can't make a hundred percent convinced decision on who's who's going down, who's finishing the playoffs, and who's going up. I can say Rotherham are going down. That's the only one I can yeah. really, really, really say. Obviously, for very obvious reasons. Other than that, I think it's anyone's game because again, you go to that bottom, the bottom, uh, bottom of the table. Teams pick up points when other teams pick up points. They drop points when other teams drop points. No one's pulling away from it. I mean, Millwall have done a good job. Swansea have done a good job. But even so, Millwall are only four points above the bottom three. So it's it's anyone's game. And it's the same with the playoffs and the automatics. Yeah. Well, the playoffs, it looks like West Brom will be there. Southampton are pretty much there, assuming they're essentially out of the automatic promotion race now. But then everything else is still well to play for, isn't it? It really is so tight in so many different areas. But look, let's make our predictions, Justin. I will kick things off with the relegation battle, which is one of the craziest I can remember in a long time. Rotherham, as we were just saying, they're gone. We know that. But it's utter carnage 
above that. Just five points separate 23rd and 16th. Only two separate 22nd and 18th. That's how bloody tight it is right now. So, Justin, we'll start with you. Who are you picking as the other two teams to be joining Rotherham in League One next season? Here we go. Here we go. I'm going with Sheffield Wednesday and Stoke. Ooh, OK. Yes, yes. I mean, Sheffield Wednesday, I think, is the probably the most obvious one. I mean, they are 23rd and have been in the bottom of three for virtually all of the season. Have they got out of the bottom three? I don't think they have. No. I, no. <laughs> they, they, I think they may have been out of it at the very first game of the season, but I think other than that, they have been oh, bottom yeah. three all season. When they played on Friday night. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, after that as well, I think I think they may have been out after the first game, week of games. Yeah, but apart from the, that, yeah. that's it. Um, even so, it is, it's not been a comfortable season. It's been one of many, many roller coasters for very various reasons. Mr. Chancery will know a lot about them. Um, but I think with, with Sheffield Wednesday and, and me being a little bit more certain with them to go down, Wednesday needs to put together a run of form again. They need they, you know, they went on a really good run of form sort of February, January, February time and they and they made up a points gap, but they've got to continue that run of form. So the questions are, are they gonna run out of steam? Are they gonna are they gonna lose legs? I mean, you've only got to go to the the, the previous game before the international break, losing six 0 away at Ipswich. Ipswich were sensational on the day. That is a caveat. But maybe that was the start of this team running out of gas. I think that's the only thing. That being said, they've got a good crop of young players who have who have shone um, in recent weeks. They've got uh, Musaba, um, Ikiukbo, uh, Dishon Bernard. You know, there are a lot of players, James Beadley in goal as well. A lot of players have come to the fore. But it's just whether it's enough to get them out of the bottom three, and essentially enough to be better than the, better than the teams above them. I just have doubts whether that's the case. I love Danny Rawl. I think he's a superb manager. I think he's amazing. And I think he will get an incredible job should he leave Wednesday um, at the at the end of the season. Or if he stays on, I think it will bring him back up to League One. I'm just not convinced. I Actually, no, I think Isco Munoz did so much damage to the team that, um, that it's going to be a little bit too much for Wednesday. What about Stoke then? Yeah, we're, we're, we're Stoke. We're Stoke. Hugely worried for them. Um, they're a side who do not develop any consistency at all. Had a hard fought win, for example, before the international break against Middlesbrough and then uh, against Preston, followed it up with defeats. They're the most hapless, and they were hapless against Norwich. They scored just 35 all season. Not prolific at conceding goals, but they're not the most creative and definitely the absolute worst when it comes to conversion. There's so there's so many variables working against Stoke and Stephen Schumacher at the moment that I just I can't see I can't foresee them again being better than the teams around them. Birmingham change managers, QPR a little bit more consistent. Plymouth maybe might get dragged into it, but for me Stoke the least convincing out of the out of the rest. Mm, interesting. Well, when I was making my predictions, I did a process of elimination because I think that's the best way to do it. I don't think it'll be Millwall. I think they've got the momentum with them now to get away from the bottom three. Blackburn are winless in nine, but also hard to beat under John Eustace. And you'd have thought they would get a couple of wins on the board eventually to keep them safe. I believe Birmingham should be all right now that they press the button on getting Gary Rowett in. Plymouth have been really poor recently, but I will blindly put faith in them being able to make the right decision on the manager and still having the talent in the squad to keep them safe. And then I don't have a huge amount of confidence in Stoke, but they seem to have a habit of living dangerously and being all right in the end. And I think that's the most likely scenario again this season. So that leaves Wednesday QPR on Huddersfield. And look, I've said them pretty much all season, so I'm going to stick with Wednesday and QPR. Both have been in pretty good form recently, but it won't take much for that to change with these two because we've seen that happen on plenty of occasions this season. QPR's last four games are all against sides in the top nine as well, which, if you are a QPR fan, must worry you quite a bit. Huddersfield's fixtures, on the other hand, are rather favourable. Sheffield Wednesdays are pretty good as well, actually, but I wonder if they may have used up their win quota for the season in February and March. So... That's what I'll go for. But look, I'm saying that with little confidence. Even the teams I've crossed out, I'm not doing so with much confidence and could easily see them going down. But if you're asking me for the teams that I think are the most likely, I'm saying Wednesday and QPR. Both have made two managerial appointments, which have been very positive and both have done really good jobs. But I uh, still won't be surprised to see them both go down just because I think the squads that they have available to them 
They're still pretty thin on the ground, pretty thin in terms of quality as well. So I would say they're the most likely for me, Justin. Yeah, I, I t- I'm going to take issue with QPR. I, I really am. I, I can't find any logic that suggests that they're going to be one of those teams that are going to be in the bottom three come the end of the season. Any logic? Any logic, to be honest with you. Again, I... I, I, I but Justin, look- Justin, I'm coming from a place of where... I'm saying they're the most likely. I'm not saying anyone is definitely not going yeah. down because I can't Neither, rule yeah. anyone out. I think you're being pretty strong if you're completely ruling them from going down. I'm not completely ruling them go- from going down, but I have Sounds more like faith. Sounds like that's what you're saying. No, no, I have more faith in the likes, uh, oh, sorry, more faith in Plymouth, Stoke, Huddersfield to go down than, than I do QPR. Okay. Um, if I look at the numbers, let's say, they've, they've won a decent amount of numbers. They're ninth for most points this kind of year in the whole division. So they, they, that's more than Huddersfield, Plymouth, Stoke, Birmingham and Blackburn. They've also conceded less goals than those teams as well. So they are a solid, solid outfit compared to those teams. And they've got the Stardust as well. They've got the Chris Willick, Elias Chair, Lucas Anderson has stepped up and been brilliant. Solid experience, back line. I don't look at Huddersfield and go, where's your Chris Willick? Where's your Elias Chair? Who's going to get? Who's going to edge a tight game for you? I just can't see it. Sober um, Thomas? One player. One player who isn't as prolific at scoring goals or having those moments as um, as Elias Chair. And also, I don't think Sorb Thomas has a reliable um, execution of players with him. He's not got a goal scorer. He's, he's only got Michael Helick from set pieces. So I just... Do QPR have a goal scorer though? Linda Dykes is... It's just been shocking for years, aren't you? Yeah, Lyndon, Lyndon Dykes is good for nine goals a season. That's the type of forward he is. Do, he'll do his bit outside of outside of that, but he's not prolific. And you are right, QPR aren't, aren't, um, aren't possessing a goal scorer. Sinclair Armstrong's been in the goals in recent weeks, not prolific. Um, but I don't think you'll get any team that are down there other than Blackburn who are a prolific goal scorer and obviously Morgan Whitaker at Plymouth. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not going to disagree with you, Justin. As I say, I'm approaching this with very little confidence and Huddersfield's recent form is a massive cause for concern. And Andre Brighton writer seems to have, you know, taken issue with some quite talented players at Huddersfield mm-hmm. for some reason, which is not what you want at this stage in the season. So it wouldn't surprise me if Huddersfield went down instead of QPI. It wouldn't surprise me if Wednesday stayed up ahead of both of them as well. Um, that's just how bloody tight it is down there. And it's so hard to call because you are essentially you know, throwing darts at a dartboard and seeing what comes out any other end, really. Um, but it's really interesting to see what SBK's odds, odds are for relegation. They think it's going to be Sheffield Wednesday and Huddersfield. Wednesday are 1-3 to three to go down. Huddersfield are 10-11. to 11. Birmingham are next at 21-20. to 20. Then it's my other pick of QPR at 6-5. to five. Justin's pick of Stoke to go down is a pretty chunky 7-2. to two. So get on it, Peachy. T's and C supply over 18s only. And please do gamble responsibly. So those picks again, I went for Wednesday and QPR. That's one to three and and six to five respectively for that. Uh, Justin's pick of Stoke to go down is seven to two with SBK. So here's how the race for the playoffs looks, which we'll talk about next, Justin. It looks pretty likely that West Brom will be there, bar a dramatic collapse. They're on 66 points. But then it appears to be a four horse race between Norwich, Coventry, Hull and Preston for sixth place. Norwich are currently sixth on 61 points. Hull are next with 58 points, then Cartman Tree on 57, Preston on 56. But those three who I've just mentioned all have a game in hand on Norwich. So it's really, really tight around sixth place at the moment. Um, I think it's probably a good bet to say it's going to be someone whose name ends in City, though. I think that's the only thing in this whole episode <laughs> which I can say with much confidence, Justin. Who are you going for as the sixth place come the end of the season, Peachy? Norwich City. I'm going with a City. Norwich City, not there Preston City, Norwich City. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm really keen on Norwich. Uh, I really, really am. And as I said in previous episodes, I'm the one that stood by Mr. Wagner. I'm the one that told the club to, to keep the faith. I've said all of this and, and Norwich are now reaping the rewards. So by all means, give me the freedom of the city. If Norwich go up, I don't mind that. Um, and I think with Norwich, it, I mean, it all depends on 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 the three key on three key variables here: Gabriel Sara, Josh Sargent, and Boyer Signs. Johnny Rose coming back to full fitness after a hamstring injury might be back before the end of the season, but we can't add too much too much um, pressure on him before between now and the end of um, 
yeah, at the end of the campaign, if he's fit for the playoffs, that's a bonus. But look at that firepower, Sara, Sargent and Sainz. Sara's creative ability, 21 goal tr- contributions, the ability to score from anywhere outside the box is disgustingly consistent. He's fantastic and it's proving to be a really good capture from Stuart Webber last season. And then Josh Sargent, again, hoping his ankle injury isn't that serious and he is fit, he is back fit to come the end of the international break. So 13 goals in 18 games. To have that level of consistency in your players, um, especially in your spine, is, is, is tremendous. And again, they've got experience all, all the way through the squad. You've got Shane Duffy, Shane Duffy at the back, Ben Gibson, Angus Gunn's been a really, really good underrated goalkeeper who we've probably not spoken about enough on this podcast. And again, you've got um, Kenny McLean, who's been an ever-present, ever-green in central midfield. So they've got a lot of factors going for them, and I think they've got a little bit more experience as well than Coventry City do. That being said, Coventry City did literally lose a playoff final last season, so that might sound in good stead. But I just think Norwich at home, they're exceptional. They're really good. I think the only problem I have with Norwich is their away form. Um, it's not great. And they've got five games left away from home now between now and the end of the season. So they pick up more points away from home. Home forms are given. Pick up more points away from home. Top six is a, is a, is a certainty. Yeah, well, Norwich have two of the best players in the league, don't they? Gabriel Sarr and Josh Sargent. Just unbelievable players who are probably going to be playing in the Premier League at some point and rightly so because they're just absolutely phenomenal and look I, I thought Jonathan Rowe losing him would be such a huge blow for Norwich but they actually seem to be playing better without him <laughs> which is a which is absolutely incredible uh, but yeah it, they have completely proven me wrong when it comes to their top six credentials and they're probably going to run it down right to the wire and fair fair play to uh, David Wagner for that um with regards to my pick, I find it really difficult to choose one over the other here. I don't think it'll be Preston. I just think the other three have significantly more quality. So I'll rule them out. Norwich have been in unbelievable form recently. Gabriel Sara, Josh Sargent, as I was just saying, generally two of the best players in the league and they have been flying. Coventry have been really good since Christmas and have some exceptional players of their own. While Hull have some very exciting players as well and a really good manager in Liam Rosinha. I'm a bit concerned about the cheap points they've given away recently though, so I won't pick them. That leaves Coventry and Norwich and I'm just going to edge with Coventry. I think the Ben Sheaf factor is massive. He's back in the squad now after injury and is genuinely the best all-round midfielder in the division. He is phenomenal and his return comes at such a good time from a Coventry City perspective and he will just make them tick in midfield. Ellis Sims has found form with 10 goals in eight games as well. That's come at a really good time. Hadji Wright is a mercurial striker who has been in good form recently too, but knows where the back of the net is um, most of the time anyway. Um, And they've also got the best offensive record out of the three teams or the four teams um, that we've mentioned here. So it's a really good uh, set up at Coventry and it's set up to be a really good end to the season for them. They've got to play three of the top four, which is a bit of a concern. And I would also be more confident if they didn't have the distraction of a cup semi-final. But I like what's happening at Coventry, so I'll opt for them here. What do you think, Justin? It's I, Again, I think I, I've more, I'm more convinced with the relegation battle um, with the likes of of Stoke and, and Sheffield Wednesday than I am with, when, with the playoffs. That being said, I think Norwich's five power probably edges it over Coventry for me. But I can't not, you know, I have to love this Coventry team. You just, it's, it's impossible to not love them because of how bloody fantastic they've become over the course of the season. They've really have developed. Um, and they, 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 it's that possibility of becoming a real cult team as well. Like, for example, getting to the FA Cup semi final, the way they did it with that last minute winner from Hadji Wright was superb. I do think, though, that might be the distraction. And I don't think it's a case of it being a distraction like, oh, we're going to focus on the FA Cup. I think it comes down to squad size. Norwich and, Norwich and Coventry, have, uh, along with Watford, have used the least amount of players this season in 23. Obviously, the FA Cup has meant fixtures have met, met, uh, needed to be moved. So there's two games now for Coventry that have got to be moved and have got to be fitted in between now and the end of the season. It's a tight. There's only six, seven weeks left of the season. A lot of games uh, to to play for a, for a small squad. That might be the the, uh, the the straw that breaks the camel's back. That's the one I was going for. I nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. That might be the straw that breaks the camel's back for Coventry, and that's why Norwich may just edge it over them. Yeah, 
it, it is so hard to call. It really, really is. But um, I, I've got faith in Mark Robbins. You know, he, he's been at this stage before, um, literally last season. Um, so hopefully he'll be able to juggle both that and the cup run. But from a neutral perspective, if you're back in Coventry, you, you have to admit that is a bit of a concern with uh, the amount of games they've got to play and the distraction of the Cup as well. Justin, let's take a quick break. After that, we'll reveal our picks for top goal scorer this season, as well as who the hell is going up. Welcome back to the Second Tier Podcast. So this is it. We're making our predictions before the end of the season. There's only eight games left or nine games, depending on who you support. So not a lot of time left for uh, teams to make up ground on other sides. And there's not a, lot, uh, not a lot of time for players to score a lot of goals left, because that's what we're discussing Next, it's who's going to finish as top goal scorer. So here's how things stand. You have Sammy Spodix leading the way with 21 goals. Next up is Adam Armstrong and Morgan Whitaker with 18. A bit further behind is Crescencio Somerville and Jack Clark, both on 15, although Clark is injured and is probably only going to play a handful of games between now and the end of the season. So it's probably not going to be him. Uh, Justin, who's your pick for top goal scorer? I've gone with a home run, I think. I've gone with Sammy Schmodix. The Schmod man, the Z, is silent. Uh, he's defied the odds all season, hasn't he? He's been absolutely incredible. Mm. I've loved watching him. I've loved watching him develop. And he's not a young player. He's 28 years old. And he's become this mercurial forward for Blackburn. It is incredible to watch him to watch him thrive in that almost a Fox 9 position. Um and, and I think, yeah, he, he deserves to be in, in contention for this because he's got 20, 21 goals this season. He's a top goal scorer at the moment. So that return for a midfielder is is extraordinary. What makes me pick him above the likes of Adam Armstrong, Morgan, Morgan Whitaker? I think they're the only two that could realistically catch him up. I think he only needs a couple of more goals, I think, to really, really solidify that, that place as top goal scorer. Yes, Rovers become a lot more frugal under John Eustace, so I think that that rate of putting or getting chances isn't quite there. Um, but can I see him scoring two, three, maybe four more? Yeah, absolutely, he's got a higher goal conversion percentage than Nigel Armstrong and a better minutes per goal ratio as well. That's what makes me edge it a little bit. And he's the main man. He's the main man. Everything's got to go through Sammy Schmodix in that final third. Whereas Adam Armstrong can be uh, maybe forgiven a little bit for sometimes maybe being a passenger if he wants. Yeah. Okay, um, not sure about passenger. Passenger seems not, a bit harsh. Just yeah, to... but he, but he can, he can. He's not relied upon. There are others. David Brooks has come in and been fantastic. Joe Rothwell's come in and been absolutely fantastic, scoring last minute goals. They've got talent packed through their team. Shay Adams. Yeah, he is one of a number of goal scorers at Southampton. Into where Sammy Spodix is essentially the goal scorer. If, if, if Sammy Spodix, I'm doing it now. Sammy Spodix <laughs> doesn't score. Rovers are fucked. <laughs> You were uh, you Connolly came out there, didn't you? Yeah, my shamish modics, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think um, the obvious answer here is Sammy Schmodix. I think it's definitely between Sammy Schmods and Adam Armstrong. I wouldn't completely rule out Crescencio Somerville. He has a habit of scoring in bursts, and when they, when he has those bursts, they are quite productive. Having said that, making up for a six goal deficit at this stage of the season is admittedly a long shot. I don't think it'll be Morgan Whitaker just because I think Plymouth have been so... Ian less... Foster's killed them. They're, they've been less productive under Ian Foster, haven't they, than they had been earlier in the season. So I think it's definitely between Schmodz and Armstrong, but I'm just going to edge it to Adam Armour. My thinking is Southampton have two games extra to play over Blackburn, which could just push him ahead. And if they want to still be in the automatic promotion race, they've got to go for it and be on the front foot in every game. So I can see that leading to loads of chances and therefore goals for Armstrong. I thought Blackburn's stodgy recent form might mean the goals dry up for Schmodzi, but apparently not. So that doesn't particularly help my cause here. However, Armstrong has scored in each of his last two games. So that may mean a run of form is just around the corner. And he's got to be firing hasn't he to make up with a three goal gap between him and Schmodix so it is going to be a close one between these two but I think Armstrong may just edge it in this case Justin what do you think it's an interesting one I looked at everything I completely forgot Southampton have got two games in hand on on Blackburn yeah, yeah. so I'm like, now I'm just like ah shit that might be the case <laughs> 
But it's still a lot of goals that I think Armstrong needs to make up. He's got to get six uh, six goals, I think, roughly, at least to beat Schmodix. If, if Schmodix can pick up a couple between now and the end of the season, that's a, that's a fair amount of number. But to be fair, Adam Armstrong did score seven in nine at the start of the season. And St. Lens are free scoring at the moment because he scored eight goals in their last two games. But he's only scored two of them. So Adam Armstrong is officially shit. I'm joking. I'm joking. Jesus Christ. I'm joking. I'm Just joking. Take, take it the lot. Take it too far sometimes, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, right. Well, um, looking at SBK's odds right now, they've got it pretty much down to a three horse race, as we we're alluding to. Although they think Crescencio Somerville may have an outside chance. He's 12 to 1. Uh, they have Justin's pick of Samish Modix as the odds on favourite at 20 to 21. My pick of Adam Armstrong is 21 to 10. Morgan Whitaker is the other horse in this race. He is 31 to 5. T's and C's apply. T's and C's apply over 18 70. And please do gamble responsibly. That again is Sammy Schmodix at 20 to 21. My pick of Adam Armstrong, 21 to 10. And if you do fancy Morgan Whitaker, he is 31 to 5 with SBK. Right, Justin, this is it. This is our prediction to win the league slash get up automatically promoted. I mean, it's incredibly hard to call at this stage, isn't it? But uh, it's... It's going down right to the wire. I think we could say this much for sure. So as things stand, Leeds are top of the table by just one goal. Um, they're on 82 points. Leicester are next, also on 82 points, but have a game in hand on Leeds. Then Ipswich are close up behind them. They're on 81 points in third place. Southampton are quite a way behind. They're on 73 points, but have got two games in hand on Ipswich and Leeds. So you can't completely rule them out, but that's admittedly a bit of a long shot at this stage. So, Justin Peach, let's have it, big boy. Let's have it. Who are you having first and who are you having second to be automatically promoted and win the title in the championship this season? Next on the line, I'm going with Leeds to win the title and Leicester to pip Ipswich to go up automatically. It's a big call. It's a very, very, very big call, I think, um, for these two. But I think the momentum that Leeds have, I think they're winning with ease at the moment. They're just cruising. Defensively, they're a machine. They're the best side in the top six. I think that works for, well, that counts for something. They're incredible. Ethan Ampadu and Joe Rodon have been absolutely unreal at centre-half together. And that, again, really does should count for something going into this bottom bottom last six uh, last eight games sorry that's a huge huge thing Adam Road is bouncing and there's no sign of discontent from supporters no labelling the club or side of play boring I think that's a big thing the fans are behind the club and that that, that works it's, that works its magic into the players Daniel Fart knows a formula as well of creating that winning mentality at this stage of the season his Norwich teams have done it and they've done it with ease they've done it with ease now with Leicester finishing second and pipping Ipswich I'm not really. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure on this one. I think. Um, I think if Maresca, it, it comes down to Maresca needing to tweak things to get more out of his team, allowing them to be a little bit more fluid and less element and controlling, and be, maybe being a little bit more Ipswich. I think that will. That might help matters. Um, I think Ipswich can drop points. They're probably more likely to drop points. I think going from this little mini season stage that we've got going on, um, and the business end of the season, I think they've got more. More possibility of dropping points because that game management might just bite them in the arse at some point. But I'm saying that with, with dis, you know, discomfort. I'm not 100 percent sure on who's going to finish second. I think if you, if you take Leeds out of that top three, uh, sorry, top two, yeah, you might be a bit balmy mad. Didn't you have Leeds and Ipswich to finish in the top two on Sunday? I think with, I mean. The, with Leeds, Leeds is an obvious one. It's an easy one. With Leicester and Ipswich, you have a little bit more time to think about it. You start to break down the logic a little bit, and you go, "Actually, no, it might be Leicester." But then again, I, I, this is why I'm yeah, yeah, you're like I'm the not... Tory government flip flopping no, no, everywhere. No. Justin, what no, are you no. doing, man? You you literally said on Sunday, "This is it. I'm getting on the Ipswich, you're going up tractor." And now it doesn't mean you've bottled it. Doesn't it doesn't mean it doesn't mean I'm getting up to go on it into second place. There's the playoffs, Ryan. Yeah, but you said. 
that it'll be Leeds and Ipswich and you've changed your mind without any games no, no, no. being played. You've changed no. your made mind in a matter of days. What's happened is I've had a little bit more time to think about it in preparation for this episode, this wonderful, wonderful episode we're cooking together right now. I think with Ipswich, Maresca's got a lot of concerns there. And as I say, I'm not saying it with any certainty. Like you said with QPR, there's, there's no logic that suggests QPR are going to go down. Yeah, but Justin, Justin, I don't care about how much logic there is or how much um, confidence you've got in it. You literally said on Sunday... It'll be Leeds first, Ipswich second. And now you've changed your mind a few days later. Again, it comes down to having a little bit more time to think about the logic of all of this. It's that, it's that game management aspect that I think might bite Ipswich in the arse. Because, I mean, the, the 6-0 win against Sheffield Wednesday was emphatic. It was controlled, but they're not going to get that every game, Ipswich. Whereas, what do you mean game management? Game management. Winning games 4-3 in the last minute almost every week it's just it's, I don't know how sustainable that's, that's that pretty good be. game management isn't it when they've won the most points from losing positions this season um, it's, well it's one side of game management but it's not it's not stopping opposition from, from hurting you is it look I'm not I'm not saying Ipswich I'm not completely ruling Ipswich out of second place I know I got on a, a um, I got on the tractor if you like but I just think with, with Leicester I, I sit there and think if Maresca tweaks things as I, as I was saying Wilfred indeed is coming back as well into the team. They've got a game in hand on Ipswich, which is going to play a, a part. Hopefully, as long as they do their business, then that might just be that might just be it. But I think it's going to be either down to goal difference or even a point. I just don't think it's going to be much that's going to separate these two teams. Which is why I'm saying Leicester purely down because Leicester have been in top two all season. Are they going to let that go right with ease? I don't think they will. Okay, well. I'm not flip-flopping, ladies and gents, but um, these are my picks for automatic promotion this season. I've gone Leicester to win the title, Ipswich Town to finish second. I've said these two all season, so I'm going to stick with them now. And this is more about me saving face over anything. It's so hard to call that I may as well stick to my guns. Because, look, Leeds have been in stunning form this calendar year. And right now, it's difficult to see them slowing down based off how well they've been playing. But it is very hard to maintain that form over long periods. And with eight games remaining, Leeds may find that to be the case as time goes on. And if they do, fair play to them. Um, but that's my main fault that I give them here. It's the only logic I can really apply here because they have looked so good recently, admittedly. Um, Leicester have been very shaky recently. That's undeniable. But we know about their quality and they're too good a side for this wobble to last too long. As you mentioned, Justin, Wilfred Ndidi coming back into things is going to be so huge. I think he's just such an undervalued part of this Leicester system, which is... A th quite a thing to say about someone who we all know is extremely talented, but I, I don't think he gets the appreciation he perhaps deserves. Um, and all it takes is a couple of wins from a less perspective and everyone will be saying, what wobble, what wobble. And I also think the game in hand is significant as well. Um, and that brings me on to Ipswich. Look, I've been aboard the Ipswich are going up track to all season. I'm not getting off now, am I? Not when we're this close. The odds aren't in Ipswich's favour here, but the thing is, the odds have been against them all season and they just keep defying them. They've been against them when it comes to the financial power of the other three teams um, in this top four race. And they've still managed to match them blow for blow. And as good as Leeds have been recently, Ipswich are still just one point behind. It's a lot closer than I think people actually realise it is. And when things are difficult, they find a way. And that's what I'm backing here. It's got to be said, the fixtures aren't in Ipswich's favour either. I would say it's considerably more difficult for them than the other two. But, and this is a big but, Leeds face Southampton on the final day. If it comes down to that, there will be strong fears of Leeds falling apart again. So that's just another ticket in my armoury here. But, it, I, I mean... Again, as I've said repeatedly throughout this episode, I'm coming here with not much confidence at all because you can't approach any of these predictions with much confidence because everything is so damn tight. And this is one of the closest top two races, title races, whatever you want to coin it, that we've had in a long time. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, what makes you think Leeds are going to drop out at the hands of Leicester and Ipswich? Because 
other than that Southampton final day season, I mean, they might have the tie wrap, wrapped up by then. I just well, I just, got... I just said, Justin, I just said, like, we, 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 have a, we have a tendency to look at form and think, oh, yeah, yeah, they've won 12 games in 13. To maintain that form is a very difficult thing. For them to, you know, what would it be? Win, like, 20 games in, you know, 21 would be a ridiculous feat. So it's not going to continue. They are going to drop points at some stage. And it just depends how much they drop off, how much they blink, if you see what I mean. Yeah, but Leicester and Ipswich have done that over the past few weeks as well. They've been dropping points. It happens. Yeah, Yeah, it happens. Yeah, what I'm saying is they've had their time to drop points now. Leeds is is still to come. Okay, okay. No, yeah, I... I, I I'm backing Leeds. I think Daniel Farkin knows what knows what he's doing. Whereas Enzo Moresk is new to him and Kieran McKenna is still novice as a manager. Daniel Fark has been there and done that, um, and he's he's got the going up T shirt twice now. Yes, yeah, yeah. you're right. He's you're right, Justin. The third time. You are right. You you're absolutely right. And they they've got some players there who know what it's like to be promoted. Um, I just. As I say, I'm approaching this with very little confidence, but they're the two I'm going with. And I think um, just maintaining that form is going to be a struggle for Leeds. But if they do it, you know what? Fair play. I will happily take egg all over my face yeah. come uh, come May. Um, but it, it's it's going to be very difficult to do. I mean, one final prediction I'll make is this. I think there's a good chance we see three teams with 100 points this season. No one in championship history has not been promoted with 90 points or more. And that's essentially guaranteed this year. It's still a possibility that someone gets a 100 and fails to go up, which would be quite insane, wouldn't it? But if each of them wins six from eight, they're pretty much there, which is a mad thought. Yeah, it is a mad thought. Um, it, I mean, it's remarkable that those teams have been able to be as consistent as they have been throughout the season. This is bearing in mind that Leeds didn't start the season particularly well. Um, Ipswich haven't really had a slump they drew a few games over Christmas um, and it was a bit uncomfortable for them but they've been largely very very good both sides have lost Leeds and Leipzig have lost less games than Leicester as well which is remarkable because it's like Leicester were never going to lose so it's it's an incredible incredible season and yes yeah parachute payment teams blah 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 but this is what the championship does it adds an element of chaos and what we've got now is chaos yeah, well, it's sort of chaos and it has been like that all season. I think the only other thing I would mention is that going back to my point of this title race being a lot closer than people think with Ipswich only being a point behind Leeds, if it wasn't for that five-minute collapse against Cardiff, Ipswich would be top of the table by two points at this stage. So if that did happen, Justin, and in this alternative reality, Ipswich hadn't had the five-minute collapse, how much would that alter your picks yeah but then think? I can go through the season and go well if Leeds didn't I know, Justin, against but it, Rotherham I know, blah, blah, blah. I know I'm being pedantic here Justin but it literally happened two weeks ago so if it didn't happen would would we be heading into this with a completely different mindset from you well again it comes down to your logic about winning games you know can can Ipswich continue winning games can Leeds continue winning games it's a difficult thing to do so by using your own logic against you, Ryan, and stabbing you with your own knife, no. <laughs> no that's fair. That's completely fair. Use my logic, sharpen it and twist it all you want. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, a, that's a fair point. But I don't know. It, it's ridiculously hard to call at this stage, isn't yeah. it? And we we could look completely like... we. There's still a good chance Ipswich could win the league, you know? It's, there's so... There's so many different twists and turns that could be had there. Ipswich could win the league. Leeds could finish second. We could be completely wrong here in yeah. a few weeks' time, as, Justin. As, as I was going to say, to cover our backs a little bit, let's welcome listeners' predictions because this is like, I, I reckon everybody's top six uh, or, or automatics playoffs relegation, everyone's is going to be incredibly different. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'd like to see more of more from the listeners just to just to help me help me feel better, help you feel better. Yeah, yeah. I, because otherwise we're going to be losing sleep at night. But the, anyway, the, this is what SBK are saying about it. They have Leicester to win the league as the odds on favourite at 8 to 11. A £10 bet on that returns £17.29 with SBK. If you agree with Justin, I think Leeds will win it. It's 2 to 1. A £10 bet on that returns £30. As far as automatic promotion is concerned, SBK have Leicester as nailed on whatever happens at 1 to 12. Ipswich to finish in the top two. 
is 11 to 5. T's and C's apply over 18s only. And please do gamble responsibly. What I can promise is it's going to be one hell of a title race slash top two race. And I think it's going to go all the way down to the wire. Now it's time for this. Scott High or Ryan Lowe? Give me fucking shit, mate. Yes, it's time for Scott High or Ryan Lowe. This is the game where we have to rank four things from highest to lowest. It's as simple as that. And there's three questions. This week, Justin is providing the questions to me. So what have you got for me, Justin Peach, you bastard? Oh, I've got an international theme just for this first question, actually, because it's the international break, but that's completely, the theme's completely null and void because it's just his first question. So I want you to rank for me the teams who have used the most foreign players in their squad this season. Ooh, okay. Hit me with them. The teams you've got are Preston, Hull, Leicester, and Stoke. Well, yes, I know what you're going to say. The obvious answer here is Preston bottom. Surely Preston are bottom. They have to be, don't they? I'm just going through their squad now. I can. Every player I think of is English or Irish. Bar um, as my itch up front and maybe a, a couple of other players. Reese, he's Danish, and too. Yeah, Preston have to be bottom. I'm going to stick them bottom. If they're not, then this is a disgrace. <laughs> um, I'll put Leicester. They more or less than Hull. Yeah, Leicester have to be. Leicester have to be top, surely. Then Hull, then Stoke, and then Preston bottom. That makes sense, but you're going to come out with some <laughs> characters who have made like two appearances all season, aren't you? Oh, because squad players count. Yeah, of course they do, you numpty. No. Um, okay, so you've got that horrendously wrong. Horrendously Jesus wrong. Christ. Stoke are top with 23. Okay. Then it's Preston with 18. What the fuck? Are you serious? 18? Then, it, then it's Leicester with 15. And then it's Hull with 14. 18? 18. Name them. I don't believe you. I've got the list this in front season. of me. I've got this Patrick Bauer. Patrick Bauer. I'm get you've named one you've named a German, <laughs> that's it. Hold on. Okay, so they've got uh, Irishman, Canadian, Scotsman, Englishman, Dane, American, Dutchman, uh, Danishman, sorry. Um Danishman. <laughs> Montenegrin. I'm not seeing 18 here, Justin. I'm going off the numbers. And are, you, are you pulling my pecker right now? Because this doesn't seem right. Not. Absolutely not. Um, I believe that uh, the Irish are counted as foreign. <sighs> Wait, when you say... Oh, OK, right. I see what... It's, you, it's, you mean, it's, it's you mean kind of... how many foreign players they've got? I was counting the different nationalities. No. More, you know, OK, players. right. Listen, classic. Listen, listen, no, no, no. Classic no, no, no. Justin not no, no, no. reading the question correctly. It's, it's classic Ryan being a pleb, um, <sighs> okay. a, an incredibly gifted one at that. Next question, because you wasted too much of my time and listeners' time already. I want you to rank who's won the most points this calendar year so far. It surprised me a little bit. Okay. Teams are Leicester, QPR, Swansea, and Preston. QPR. Preston, who's the other one, sorry? Leicester. Swansea. And Swansea. Swansea. Ooh. Surely Swansea aren't that high. I reckon Leicester. Leicester have been in poor form, but surely they can't be that low. So I'll put Swansea bottom. Surely Swansea are bottom. That'd make no sense if they're not. Um then I'll go Preston top. Then, oh, surely Leicester have one more points than QPR. I'll go with that. Preston, Leicester, QPR, Swans. You've nailed it. I thought so, yeah. You've nailed it. I thought it would be a bit trickier because um, Preston are up there, basically. They've won yeah. 21 points and it's Leicester I, with 20. I only know that because I read that stat out in Sunday's episode, I think, where um, only the top, uh, only West Brom, Leeds and Ipswich have won more points than Preston this calendar yeah. year, which is quite remarkable, really, isn't it? It is. It is. And that's why they're up there fighting for the playoffs. Mm. Uh, yeah, and then it's QPR with 19 and then it's Swansea with 17. So Swansea have actually done pretty well. They're sort of mid-table. So Luke Williams deserves a little bit of credit. Yeah. 
well done, Luke. Justin, what's the final Scott High Ryan Low? I want you to give. Well, I want you to rank the cities outside of London, who, which are the most expensive to buy a house in. Oh fuck's sake! Okay, Bristol, Bournemouth, Edinburgh, and Oxford. Very southern. Mm-hmm. Um, Bristol, Oxford, Bournemouth, and what was the other one? Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Mm. Surely Edinburgh's bottom. Why? I'd say. Because it's furthest away from London. <laughs> to, it's the capital city. Yeah, I'll, I'll put Edinburgh bottom. Um, Oxford has got to be top, I think, hasn't it? Yeah, I'll put Oxford top. Um, I think Bristol is quite expensive. But Bournemouth, I don't know. Bournemouth is quite a affluent area, isn't it? Uh, it's a coin toss between those two for me. I'll go Bournemouth, second bottom, Bristol second. So Oxford, Bristol, Bournemouth, Edinburgh. He's bloody nailed it again, ladies oh, and gents. He's nailed it again. That. Absolutely spawn. Dion Dublin, eat your fucking heart out, lad. I'm yeah. the new Holmes Under the Hammer man. Is he Holmes Under the Hammer? It's Holmes Under the Hammer, yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Stairs leading up to the bedroom. That's what it's all about. Oh, yeah, yeah, incredible. He's come back from his holiday, refreshed, recharged, and ready to go. And he's nailed two out of three questions, albeit after a stumble at the start. So you are right. Oxford's top average house price is 446 grand. Ooh. Then it's Bristol. Quite a. a Okay, number of 335 grand. Mm. Then it's Bournemouth at 328 grand. I imagine that average is brought down by actually Bournemouth maybe being a little bit of a dump because obviously there's the Sandbanks. Whoa, whoa, uh, whoa. Da, 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 Bournemouth's da, da, da. nice. They're the Premier League team. I don't have to talk nice about them. Okay. They've got the Sandbanks, which are millions of pounds, and then what's in between? Nothing. Bournemouth is, not, Bournemouth is nice, I think. Yeah, Sandbanks. Uh, Edinburgh, uh, an average of 270k. So there you go. 270k to live in Edinburgh. Bargain, mate. Bargain. I'll tell you what, Justin, I am buzzing after getting two Scott Higher Ryan Lowe's. I think that's my best performance of the season, to be honest. So I'm heading into the weekend full of love and laughter. And I hope you are too, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the Second Tier Podcast. And this is an announcement. This is a big call for you to get your questions in to us because we are doing a Q&A on Sunday. Send them in to us. I mean... The best way to get noticed and potentially get a shout out on the show is by emailing them into secretarypod at gmail.com. Alternatively, DMing us on Twitter. We will put out a call for questions at some point this week, but there's a chance if you reply to that message, uh, that tweet, that um, you may get overlooked. You've got more chance if you send them in uh, via email or DM. So secretarypod at gmail.com. Also remember to get in touch with your Footballers you met in strange places, as well as streets won't forget players, because we're still very much enjoying that here on the second tier. But otherwise, we'll see you again on Sunday. But this has been the second tier podcast. I've been Ryan Dilks. I've been Justin Peach. And a big thank you for listening.